question. What would the repercussions be on American internal and external affairs? Let's go well, back to the gentleman's I mean, question. To, to answer that question, yes, if, 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 if it was proved that there had been any degree of complicity in this, I mean, criminal charges would, would mm. obviously result. And we America's stock in the world? Oh, would, would plummet. I no, think Bush has pretty has. much already squandered what, what goodwill came the U.S.'s way it, right after 2001 In what anyway. way squandered? Um, well, with things like Guantanamo and, and, and the general policies towards foreigners visiting the United States and all those other things, the, you know, has, I think it was The Onion said something about uh, this country discovers a sudden temporary affection for New York City. Um, I think something similar happened with the states. There was this brief period where everybody sort of felt sorry for the U.S. and, and wanted to help and wanted to, you know, I got, on the day itself, I got email from people I really hardly knew who said, you know, I just wanted to send my condolences to somebody and you were the only person I could think of. Annie Machen, let's put that question to you. How would America's stock fare if it was discovered of something? Um, well, one would hope that the war criminals would be put on trial, as Nick says, they should face charges. Um, I think there would be a lot of sympathy, perhaps, or an increase in sympathy for the average Americans who have been conned and been railroaded into a war that is bankrupting the country on the lies of a corrupt administration, if this sort of evidence comes out. But just to pick up what Ian Henschel said as well about the charges they could face, I mean, looking at international law, it's clear cut. There is the Kellogg-Briand Pact, 1928, the Nuremberg Principles, the Rome Statute and the Inter International Criminal Court Act in this country. Tony Blair and George Bush are liable clearly under all these laws. They should be in The Hague and they should be on trial for war crimes, wars against peace, crimes against humanity and genocide. Yeah, they would argue about the United Nations, of course. The United Nations has nothing whatsoever to do with this. The United Nations has no power whatsoever to um, agree to allow a country into an aggressive war unless it's purely in immediate self-defense. Which have is, no of course, what the, the American argument was. No, there is... Well, self-defense against terrorism. There, it has to be imminent, as in someone is about well, to Im invade your country. Well, it's they just not had about some planes flown into buildings, didn't they? Does that No, count? no, this was... This was my, anyway, they've been planning the wars for months before 9-11 happened. They were just looking for the pretext. I mean, let's not forget the neocon think tank, the Project for the New American Century, in 2000, writing that they wanted some American imperial expansionism in the Middle East, and they said they needed a new Pearl Harbor in order to get the American people to go along behind this. There was loads of speculation in American circles prior to, nine, to, to 2001 as to, and Brzezinski said the same thing, we need a, a catalyzing thing, the Americans are losing interest in abroad, we need so, something to happen at home. So um, just before we go back to more questions, ultimately it comes down to possibly then, Ian, and indeed for all of you, they let it happen and tried not to stop it, or they helped to make it happen. Which side of that fence would you come down on? I would say undoubtedly somebody, at the very least, somebody in the middle ranks of the CIA and the FBI. And, and Nick was wrong in saying that it was just an issue of information sharing. It wasn't. It, was, it went that much, wasn't much what further. I said. I said that was one of the, one of the issues, issues, yes. But it went much right. further than the failure to share information. Um, however, when you look at the issue of whether those pilots could have flown those planes, and bearing in mind the Pentagon's anti-hijack exercise that was going on that morning, mm -hmm. I think you have to... I would, put, as a betting man, I would bet on they made it happen, made it happen. rather than they let Animation, it happen. Animation, let it happen or helped or made it happen? I'm not taking a view on this. I'm just saying we need new inquiry because the victims, the survivors, the victims across the world in the illegal wars, which were based on the lie that is 9-11, require justice. So let's have a new inquiry. Let's not make, go in with pre, um, presumptions about what might have happened. Let's say proper, independent, in, in, um, international and impartial inquiry to get right. to the truth at last. We'll go back to the audience in just a second. I appreciate you're probably going to see neither, but I have to put it to the other two panels. Let it happen or help to make it happen? Uh, neither. I, I mean, <laughs> clearly this was Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. Uh, they've said as much. They have a track record of, of launching murderous terrorist attacks, and that's exactly what happened. And if any of these conspiracies theories had any substance to them the, it, you know there would be more than just internet tittle-tattle Wendy Gross um, the great American humorist Mark Twain had a great saying which was and we need some humor at this three time, people so. can keep a secret if two of them are dead I think the number of people that would be required to either let something happen or make it happen within mm. the United States 
would not be possible to just keep it a secret. Wendy, can I just well, quote you something from Daniel Ellsberg? He's a very really famous quickly, and we must guy. Get back out. He leaked the Pentagon Papers. You, I'm sure, Wendy, you remember Daniel Ellsberg. This is what he says about that theory. The reality, unknown to the public and to most members of Congress and the press, is that secrets that would be of the greatest import to many of them can be kept from them reliably for decades. This is what Daniel Ellsberg says by the executive branch, even though they are known to thousands of insiders. All right. so That's what Daniel blown, Ellsberg said. He, with respect, would, Wendy, I he think, knows more about think, that than the average I, journalist. I think someone would have blown the whistle on this if, if there was any complicity at all. They no, done, no, they it's haven't. All there. No, you they call haven't. it internet tittle tattle. That's what other people call blowing the whistle, but the media won't listen. Well, right. if there the was any thing. evidence to back it up, then there's loads of evidence. No, there isn't. I've okay, let's, a book let's full of it, Nick. With regards to evidence, we are definitely going back to questions.